hello guys you're welcome back to photographics academy all right so today we're going to be retouching this image right here on this channel live here so everything we're going to be doing from scratch go from skin retouching to uh color grading to blemish removal everything i'm going to show you step by step guide on how i will approach this image so without wasting much of your time let's quickly get started so the first thing we will do definitely is to take care of the blemishes of course we'll create our black and white adjustment layer then cross it down look at that so you see the way the blemishes are now taking black shapes it's very very obvious so i'm going to make a duplicate of my background then pick up my patch tool because man this needs patching and i'm going to start patching the skin by removing the blemishes don't mind me so we just remove the blemishes yeah okay so i think i'm going to fast forward this particular part so i don't waste your time all right so we are done with the mod we can remove okay so as i've still seen few ones over here so we can decide to leave this and still fix them later inside our request separation. So I think that is what I'm going to. All right. So this is the before. This is the after. So I'm going to match this up. Press OK. Then I'll open up my group. All right, so I need to get the action we're going to be using because it's not here, so just give me a minute. All right, so welcome back. So the first thing we're going to be doing is our frequency separation. Yeah, so I'm going to show you how to set up the frequency separation. You can as well decide to use the frequency separation in your action, but this is how you set it up. So you make a two duplicate of your background layer. You call one your texture or your call one your tone or your color. So I'm going to call this one my load. You do the same thing for another. For the other layer above it and you call it your hair call it your high so once that is done make a group of the two but before you make that group deactivate your high request then go into filter go to blur go to cushion block zoom in on your image and blow it out just enough to stop seeing the full skin details but you are still seeing the skin so i kept mine at five then I'm going to open up my high, go straight into my high, go to my image, go to apply image. Yeah. So once you have your apply image, make sure that your layer is changed to low, which is this one, because this is where we are sampling from. Then make sure your blend mode is set to subtract. Every other settings remain the same. Press OK. Now change the blend mode to linear light. And you are going to have your frequency separation properly set up so now i'm going to pick up my mixer brush and start painting on my low just like that just that simple so we'll just start painting over our object the way her face structure is I'm going to paint over here but i think i want to lose the cheek line so i'm just going to paint that out you notice i'm flattening out the face line i'm trying to make sure i do not even have so much shadows blocking around the All right, so guys, we are done with the frequency separation. Let me show you the result we have. I'm going to group these two inside the frequency separation group. This is the before. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. So I feel I did a little too much over here. 
Open trial building bags of shadowed. All right, this is the before. This is the after. The next thing I want to do is another form of frequency separation, but this time is not this approach. So this one is going to be responsible for the smoothing of our skin. So how do you do that? First of all, you flatten this. Then you create an empty layer. Pick up your mixer brush to one more time. Make sure that your sample or layers is spawn on the front. Then zoom in on your image and start painting on the skin using your mixer brush. So as much as possible, try to maintain the structure of the skin. You just paint it over like this. You need to be careful with this because this is more like smudging. So if you are not careful, your image will be destroyed. The idea is to get a very smooth skin that looks glossy. And this is one of the ways you can actually it. You see the one I'm taking my time and painting over the image. Very, very important. Because this procedure is going to blow it now. Now place one more empty layer. So that what I'm doing can do protect. I'm actually not seeing the effect of what I'm doing on the image. Except for the face. So let me just fix it and know exactly what the problem is. This is a very interesting procedure. Once you are done with your main frequency separation, you can use this to give your image that extra glossy look that you always see professionals have in their image. This is one of the ways they achieve it. By just smudging with your mixer brush and introducing your texture later, which I will show you exactly how to do that light per base program. So make sure you are not going anywhere. All right, so once you are done, which I am not, just give me one moment. Let me make sure I have cleaned up all the areas that need to be. So the reason we are doing this this way is because there are a lot of photographers that don't like their images having, you know, that high texture look at the end of the day. They want it looking very glossy and smooth. So this is what we've done. Although we've distorted the face a little bit, but we can of course fix that later. So all we need to do now is to make a duplicate of our background. Yeah, remember I'm hiding it. Then drag it all the way to the top like this. Then go to your filter, go to other, go to high pass. So you are going to increase your high pass until you see enough, st enough texture that you want on the skin. So for this case, I'm going to keep it around 1.5. Press enter, then change the blend mode to overlay. So now we'll have a textured skin. Then I'm going to open up my uh, layer that is below and clip my texture layer on the smooth layer. Now, if we put the both of them in a group, you will see how much we've affected the image. Yeah, of course, this looks really, really unrealistic because of the intensity of it so we need to just bring it down just like that beautiful so we'll have the before and the after it are that's beautiful so the next thing we need to do is our dodge and burn i think it's still slightly a bit too much so i'm going to match this up and pick up our dodge and burn so i'm going to come to my curves over here i will place my curves for my dodge then create one more and darken it for my board. So I'm going to call this my D and call this my B. Of course, you need to invert the uh, layers, pick up your brush. I will paint it with around three or two. Let's keep it at three and just start making the bright places brighter within your dodge. You don't need to spend so much time on this. So put our highlights over here, 
now highlight over here those these two areas do the same thing over here do the same thing over here we have our touches and go on here it's on the forehead very important over my lips slightly I'm just pushing up the opacity a little to fit into what I want to achieve on the nose area. So we'll take it back to three or five. Let's work with five. And we'll come over the eyes area here. Brush, brush, brush. Then immediately we'll go to our bond. Just subtle changes here and then. And this one slightly darker. This the something over here. So for my nose area, just a very tiny look. Like this, do another one here. Can even decide to brighten the edge just a little. All right, so I'm going to group my dodging and burning. We didn't spend so much time doing that. So this is the before, this is the after. The before, the after. So I think my highlight is too much on the cheek over this area because I want that dimension to be there. So I'm going to quickly increase my brush and just reduce the highlight I have here. Just this area. And this is the before. This is the after. Beautiful. So the next thing I want to do, I think I need to put a little highlight on her hair. Here. Here. Here as well. And here. So have that shiny hair looking at us. So the next thing I want to do is to even smoothen out the skin a little bit more. And to do that, I'm going to press Ctrl J, Ctrl I. Change the blend mode to vivid light. Go to your filter, go to your other, go to your high pass. Now, the high pass is going to be responsible for how smooth the image is going to look. So for this image, I'm going to be keeping it at six. Then press OK. Still there, go to your filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. So our Gaussian blur is responsible for how much textures we are going to retain at the end of the day. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around 1.5. Hold my alternate, I create a mask for it. Now I'm going to paint over the skin. So remember we said we are going to be getting a very smooth skin at the end of the day. So we are doing everything to make sure we'll get it. Just like this. We have very smooth skin. So I need you to go to the comment section and tell me of all the techniques we've used in this video, which is your favorite? Which is your favorite? I think so far we've used three different skin retouching techniques. We've used uh, our frequency separation, normal frequency separation. We've used using our high pass and painting on an empty layer to even smoothen out a little bit. And we have as well used this particular one that we are using right now. So go to the comment section and tell me which of them that you prefer, that you think is the best approach to getting a smooth skin. We're going to be in the same thing over here. Do the same thing over here. Okay, so I'm going to drop this down a bit. So the last two things we're going to be doing is to load our automatic dodging and burning. So I'm going to come to my automatic dodge and burn over here. And of course, I need to delete uh, this one. I need to delete this. Then for my bone, control I, for my dodge, control I. Then group the two of them into one group, hold by alternate and create a mask. So I'm going to brush over them. Or rather, we can just go into the group and brush over it like this. Because it's properly selected to give it that high contrast look. I think it's too much for my neck. Of course, I'll drop it down. The same thing for my highlight. Then I'll reduce the overall opacity of the group and we are good to go. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. So the last thing I want to do is just affect the shape of her face a little using my liquefier. I think it's too circular. I just wanted to have that D-shaped look at the end of the day. So let's try it out using our liquefier. So we are right here in the liquefier. I'll go to the face section over there. That has made the selection for me. So I need to reduce the size of her face. Look at the face over here. So I'll come to the chin, uh, to the jawline. I need it slightly tiny. The face width reduced a little bit. Then I'll come over to the nose. I need my nose to be slimmer. 
and slightly longer and we are good to go press ok so the last thing i want to do is just brighten up a little i'm noticing some irregularities on the skin so i'll just brighten this whole area up this will be too much those the areas that i feel are too dark for my liking so i'll right click whether it may be like 44 to get a very smooth transition hold my cuffs and just brighten it up a bit beautiful the before the after so this area needs to lose it and we are good so let me show you the overall before and after of the image so i'm going to create a snapshot and take it all the way to the top so this was the image where we started let me take it oh all right so this was the image where we started this is the image when we are done this is the before this is the after this is the before this is the after thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and if you do subscribe turn on your notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video until then see you on the next one